Action Park Media. get a mic check here one two <laughs> one two episode 46 no gruffs given we're on a little bit of a run here um with guests interviews this is our third interview in a row we don't normally do interviews so i think it's uh i'm excited uh liz goldwin has has joined us in her namesake la um born and raised born and raised which is quite rare it is rare Speci- third, third generation third generation um third generation hollywood royalty but but you know did you see less than zero when it came out do you remember no, it? i was a kid you were a kid yeah i wasn't i don't think i was i don't remember when that came out but but was do you ever remember la being that vibe having that well i got sent to boarding school went on the east coast when i was 13 because i got invited to leave um my private school in los angeles because i was super naughty so yeah when i was a kid it was definitely like the sunset strip was still like you know guns and roses was popular right and it was like packed right so yeah but i was too young to i was into like skateboarders and hip-hop so i didn't really participate in the like cocaine yeah i was gonna ask you going down it was more like smoking blunts and drinking 40s so what bands uh what hip-hop what rappers were the like were you dedicated west coast i liked east coast and west coast but when i was in high school it was like the far side yeah was really big um freestyle fellowship Uh uh-huh more west coast like dell the funky homo sapien yeah um what about uh well jurassic five was much later right no, not not really. I was really into De La, uh-huh. who are finally, their music's finally going to be available on streaming. Why? They just haven't had it? No, because they were always talking back in the day about fighting the record, how record companies were evil. Right. Um, it's going to be a stream available for streaming in March. That's exciting. Yeah. Tribe. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, also people like um, Two Live Crew, mm. Ghetto Boys, uh-huh. DJ Quick. Yeah. My mom threw the Two Live Crew um cd out the window of the car because me and my brother were like there's only one place where we can go where the price is right just a fuck a hoe yeah i it, don't know if i'm allowed to swear on this you show. absolutely are yeah. and and by the way that's one of those monumental um like on a tape just remembering that logo like the the, the logo of the tape uh-huh. it, it was one of those it's etched in my mind it was almost like contraband. It was. Yeah, so dirty, but yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I loved like all of that dirty hip hop. And and, <laughs> and um now you live in Hawaii though, right? I do. Yeah. I live between here and there. I, tra- I travel a lot for work, but So do we say Hawaii d- or do we say I don't really Lanai? S- I don't live on Lanai. I'm oh, not going to say the island oh, okay. I live on. But you would I say... I like to keep some things private. But you would say the island is the island name. That's where you yeah. live. Yeah. It's not Hawaii. Hawaii is the state. Hawaii is the state. Okay. Yeah. So and you, you you say on instead of in because it's an island. Oh. Actually, the islands and the one I live in are the most... Um, the They're the furthest landmass from any other landmass in the world. It's like the most vulnerable place to live because you're literally in the middle of the Pacific Ocean completely submitting to nature and you've had some uh a rough couple of weeks right i mean you know when you if climate change is affecting all of us yeah uh but when you live in such extreme nature you're really humbled by it all the time right like flash floods um all regularly landslides getting blocked i have to cross a lot of bridges to get to like where there's you know a grocery store or something like that but i love it wow it's very ex- different than hollywood yeah i like the extreme i like extremes yeah you like going from one to the other i'm still integrating with the whole la thing i think i find it challenging sometimes like, being here i think especially because i did grow up my whole family's in the movie business yeah. and i i'm i find it hard to take the focus in los angeles on like celebrity right um and the sort of superficiality of it Mm -hmm. i find kind of hard sometimes which which no matter who you grew up with they've all probably been influenced by that to a certain extent right 
Hollywood yeah. or like fame. I find the pursuit of fame weird. I think that's what it is, is that, you know, and now like we're living in such a culture of it, it with social media yeah. where everyone equates like fame and money with happiness. Yeah. And as we know, that's just not the case. Yeah. You yeah. know what Jay-Z says? Mo more money, more problems. More money, more problems. Yeah. I mean, one of the greatest, I mean, just, just beautifully said. Uh, sex, health, and consciousness. Okay, so we've had a conversation before. Um, you have done a lot of things in your life, but it seems like you're really kind of coming into your own as a, I guess, uh, I, I, I need to say writer to a certain extent because that's part of it, but also you're bringing the words to life from the page, right? You're trying to tell this story in a 3D world. Mm-hmm. I guess the first question is, who are you trying to help? Everybody, myself, all of us. Yeah. Right? We're all constantly on a journey of healing. Yeah. Doesn't ever stop. I, I think it's funny how um, everybody's looking for like a shaman or a guru or a pill yeah. to like fix things. Right. And it just that's never going to happen. Yeah. You're actually your own best guru. Yeah. Um, and I think somewhere along the way, we've forgotten to li- we've forgotten how to listen to ourselves, mm-hmm. to tune into our intuition, to our own inner wisdom, our, our own compass. We just get so beaten down by conditioning, um, the way we're raised. Um, so I'm getting a little sidetracked, but no, yeah, but I write to write. I write to help everyone. I mean, this is my third book, but this book is more c- most closely aligned with my company, The Sex Ed. Yeah. Which is a uh, we have a podcast called The Sex Ed that I host and a website, and it's really designed it to be like Sesame Street about sex for for adults, yeah. for 18 and over, but in that like inclusive, welcoming, entertaining way. Yeah. Um, and it's really important to me to reach straight guys yeah. too, because I feel like we've, um, you know, just in the same way that like women have been oppressed and suppressed, we oppress and suppress men too by keeping them in these boxes. Yeah to play these like very specific roles and we're denying them as you and I've talked about before, um, the capacity to grow and evolve and have really loving, nurturing, healthy relationships with others and themselves. Yeah. Do you think that that, um, has this been a pleasant surprise you tapping into the, to the male audience as far as who, because I don't think that you started this journey to educate men necessarily oh i did when i first really? started when i first started the site i was like we have to do all this content for men we need to have stuff on prostate pleasure and erectile sorry erectile okay. dysfunction and disorder and like in the sex positive like woke internet world yeah. every time we do that content if we put it on social media people would trash us but yet the like our essays on male orgasms on the site get like consistently like hundreds of thousands of hits yeah um, so it's interesting because people, obviously there's a need for that information. And I knew from the beginning of building this company that that was important to put that out. I have four brothers. Yeah. I'm a heterosexual woman. Yeah. So if I'm not helping men, then again, I'm not helping myself. I'm not helping the relationships that I have with all kinds of men in my life, right. whether it's personal or professional or familial. Right. Um, okay. So let me ask you this, cause this is burning on my head right now and just relation to, to everything, because when we go through the um, um, the chapter list, and I'll, I'll go through it, but so I'm in a situation right now in my life that I, you know, I don't know. I guess I sit here today and I feel like I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if I'll ever love again, right? To a certain extent, right? Because I've I'm, been there. I'm, I'm, I'm. The reason I'm bringing that up is that um, my peers, I mean, uh, Action Park Media, there's a lot of single men here. I, I, I've been educated on what's going on. I want to bring two specific things up. Dating apps and, and porn. Mm-hmm. Because I want to understand what your feeling is outside of mine. I think right now, as I sit here, not thinking about whether I'm ever going to be able to love again or anything like that, but just, you know, being a little bit acute to the surroundings right now and having a two-year-old son and, and, and really kind of understanding the importance of fatherhood and guidance and 
you know, we're hearing it in sports. We're hearing athletes talk about it now. Vulnerability coming from men is like a, I don't want to call it a hot topic, but it's a topical topic that is, it's, it's in the general conversation. We have some leaders that are saying, you know what? Israel Adesanya, he's a, a professional fighter, UFC fighter. Mm-hmm. He talks about his, his feelings. You know, he, he opens up about it. Now, I know it's a double-pronged question, but where are we today with the advances in technology helping us and hurting us, us as in men? Like, how do we navigate these waters to dull our temptations, to um, give us the ability to, you know, treat women the way that they're supposed to be treated, which could be predated. You, you hear the word chivalry or I now think of chivalry, chivalry because of this journey that I've been on as like, when was the last time you checked in on the inner child of, of a female in your life or understood what's going on with them or even felt that in the way that you approach somebody not on a screen mm-hmm. in a Starbucks? Well, there's a lot you just said. Yeah. So let's start with vulnerability. Okay. Because vulnerability is actually one of our greatest strengths. And even me, it took me a long time to learn that because I was raised with four brothers. Yeah. Alpha men. Mm -hmm. Alpha dad, alpha grandfather, all, you know, I felt like I always had to kind of be at their level, measure myself against them, all these things. And I had this crazy accident about five years ago that coincided with me starting this company where I had to learn to walk again. Mm -hmm. I had a permanent metal rod put in my right leg. It was so humbling and it put me in a position where I literally needed help. Yeah. And I really learned the power and vulnerability then my own power and vulnerability. And I think for any of us, no matter what your gender or your sexuality is, vulnerability can only be, be a, a strength not a um, not a weakness. Right. I think men are taught in particular that it's a weakness. I just came from, I just went to the WSL Awards, which is the World Surfing League Awards uh-huh. in Oahu. Yeah. And uh, the, this guy, Felipe Toledo, who won, world, was world champion, won world championship last year. He was giving, he was accepting his award and speaking on stage, stage about how much he'd been struggling in the last year, openly yeah. in front of a whole room of people. Uh, about how he'd been struggling, he'd been depressed, and it was it was amazing right. to see that. I think I texted you saying, yeah. like, you know, just thinking a lot about in sport in professional sports too, with being injured. There's this whole thing that you probably got told as a kid. Guys get told to buck up, yeah, buck up, don't cry, be a man. All these things that you get told as a little kid, yeah, it's it's crazy because you're not allowed to have all your normal feelings. Like I'm in pain, I'm sad, I'm scared, I'm hurt, yeah. Um, you know, it's just like, let's put that wall up. So I think one vulnerability is a great thing to start to have access to so that you can start to identify your emotions in any situation. Yeah. And once you can start to do that, then if we're going to talk about like love or sex, you could start to notice whether you're doing things because of anxiety or boredom or loneliness or depression, or whether there's like a real connection because i'm not against like hey if you want to have casual sex as long as you're really clear about that with your partner as long as there's some discussion around that that's fine whatever yeah your choice is as long as there's consent and yeah you know respect and boundaries is okay but if you're looking for something more i think also we expect that men don't want more than that but i actually find that that's not true yeah i think men do want to have real connection and i think you can have real connection and great sex yeah in fact i think sex is usually better when you're comfortable with someone yeah okay so two things to that um um how does a man or how do we obviously uh you know our our giants in in the industry that are starting to also step into this space of vulnerability is a good thing because we feel more comfortable when the guys that we look up to do it that makes us think like okay that's okay um oh yeah wait one thing about that when kobe bryant died it was like the first time i'd seen some of my male friends cry openly so the fact that the one of the only times it's okay for a man to cry 
is when it is sports. Yeah. When they're, when they're, when they're. <laughs> when a hero dies when a or hero when a dies. sports team wins or loses. Right. Which is kind of crazy. When you think that like, I even hear like straight women emasculate men who cried. Oh, he cried. And I have to remind straight women all the time. All the time you would not believe it. Even ones in long term relationships. Hey, men have feelings. Right. Right. You know, yeah, because th we've been conditioned, right, to okay. think those things too. Okay, so that comes back to your point from a from a personal standpoint. Why you embarked on this journey a little bit was also, it you know, helping men is going to help women. Helping men, I mean, not specifically from a, a male female relationship, because you know, men that that find vulnerability that are in same-sex marriage or relationships or marriages, they're also going to be affected in the same way. How does a man start to dip his toe into this water without going through some sort of crisis? Like, because it always seems like, m well, and sometimes it's certainly, I I'm going through a, a real thing, and thankfully, I've been able to tap into some stuff and really sort of dive into some stuff but that was caused by something we have a lot of men that are status quo that are working that are doing how do they get over the hump and say you know what i think that this can make me more powerful and i think it can make all my relationships more powerful and the people that i'm in those relationships with it's going to help them make them more powerful well let's change the word power let's swap the word powerful you're right and let's also say that it doesn't matter. I don't think it's just men that are walking around being status quo. It's most human beings on the planet. Okay. Are like, well, you know, what is it? Birth, work, marriage, sex, babies, taxes, death, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Most people are walking around just content on the surface, and they actually don't want to do the inner work or the reflection because it's fucking hard. Yeah. And it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And, I mean, as I write in the book, there's a lot of shit in that book that I share that it's so embarrassing and awkward that are things that I actually never prior to writing it for now anyone to read that I w have even said yeah. to some of the people in my life. Right. Um, and that was like, I think actually the last time you and I did an interview together, I was like in the middle of writing the it, book. It wasn't out yet. Yeah. 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 It was like two years ago yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, so I'm in a different stage in that journey now. Um, I mean, I guess the first step is to be like, Am I willing to crack beneath the surface? Am I satisfied with my life? Yeah. Am I happy in my relationships? Am I fulfilled? Am I doing the things that I want to do personally, professionally? Am I happy in my marriage? Am I happy in my relationship? Yeah. Am I am I cheating because I'm unhappy? A lot of times when people cheat, for example, it's it's really because they can't address something in the relationship. And that could even just be sexually, because most people don't know how to talk about sex. Yeah, I, I, um, so. And by the way, you can't cruise control sex. Like, I mean, I was telling you, I was in a 13 year relationship. That was not one of our issues because it's lit. It's what I do. This right. is my third book around this subject. Right. But most people, they just think that once you get in a relationship, sex is going to sustain at the same level as where you start. At. That's just not true. Yeah. It's like you make time to exercise or do your routine, you know, of whatever it is you're disciplined about it. But people just think that this like one part of our lives, let's just like shove it over there and it turns on whenever we want to in that moment it's that's not the case what has there been something that we've lived with that has um made that specific conversation like i'm sure there there's tons of relationships out there that both parties maybe have never told the other person what they really like 100 percent. like what kind that's not a way to live Right? No, and I think it's really, I think what the, the funny thing is, people just don't want to talk about it, but like they will lick each other's orifices, <laughs> but not have a conversation about yeah. this is what I like, this is what I don't like. Here, I mean, I think it's really cool to talk about those things before you have sex. If right. you're if you're wanting to get in a relationship with someone, yeah. Actually, even if you want to just have some freaky, kinky sex play, yeah. Like the more freakier, kinkier scenes that you get into, the more dialogue happens before sex happens. Right. So you can create a safe space. Because it becomes sort of like a, uh, well, you're you're 
a safe space that's somewhat been scripted loosely or you've started well, to you play know what the, the edges are you know yeah. what the edges of the sandbox are yeah. you know what like the no goes are i know where you don't like to be touched yeah. you know like what the hard outs are for me it's kind of like if you're playing a sport there's rules yeah right yeah it's yeah. not a free-for-all right so you got to play within those rules yeah do you find that um like men i i guess that's a real dangerous, I don't know. It, it feels like men today probably are living in a space where they maybe are afraid to have those conversations. One, because of the vulnerability of it. Two, maybe there's a little bit of shame attached to it. Mm -hmm. Where does the shame come from? We all have the shame. We do. Yeah, we all have the shame. It's embarrassing to yeah. talk about, because just because we're not taught, it's like anything. Right. You know, it's like... Uh, I can think of so many. I mean, I literally is what I do all day long is like answer people's questions. Right. And so much of it comes down to just have a conversation. I know it's going to be awkward, um, but once you get past that, because you can't ever like get what you want in life yeah. unless you take a risk. Right. 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 Yeah. And this is a healthy risk. And actually, I think in today's environment, when there's so much more um, emphasis on consent and mm -hmm. boundaries, it's really good to talk about things. Yeah. Before they happen. Right. Yeah, well, it, it, it feels empowering. I mean, I've always been somebody that I think has been able to, um, I guess part of my problem or my codependency issues or some of the things that I've identified is I like to please people. Um, I like to help people. Like I was, I was an undersized kid that played sports and my secret power was to attack the bullies to help my teammates, mm -hmm. right? To get ahead of it, to kind of like, I don't care. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not embarrassed to say this because I think that I'm shielding somebody over here from, from danger. I, I guess what I'm trying to understand is not everybody is like me or as confident, or maybe I don't even know if the word is confident, but how do we break this barrier? I guess is the question to where we are today in a modern day world where I think men are a little bit afraid, mm -hmm. right? I think men are dulling their senses by using the apps versus, you know, not having an app and building up this energy where, you know what, you want to meet somebody or connect with somebody and you have to do it outside of your phone. Mm -hmm. That's a superpower. Well, dulling is one. I have a chapter called Filling the Void, Yes, which is all about how we use things. And I think when we're mostly using sex to fill a void, meaning... Okay, explain that. So filling a void is like that emptiness you feel inside. I like that we all feel inside at some points. And uh, my friend Rami Youssef, who has that show Rami, yeah. it's an amazing comedian, writer, yeah. director. Um, he... Oh, I did an episode of the podcast with him, but one of the seasons, I think it was the second season of Rami, he's like, the first episode, he's like sitting in bed, furiously trying to masturbate to porn, eating Haribo gummies, yeah, like stuffing his face, can't get off. Right. So he's filling the void. Right. He's filling the void through emotional eating and through watching porn. Mm -hmm. um, so we could do it with anything. We could do it with drugs. We could do it with alcohol. There's a difference between like having a drink to celebrate or smoking a joint or whatever and yeah. doing it to escape. Yeah. Um, because there's some uncomfortable feeling that we don't know how to name. So going back to that, like learning to sit in those uncomfortable moments yeah. and just even just be like, what is that I'm feeling? I feel it's not actually, it's bo it, the boredom. Is it boredom? It's anxiety. What is the anxiety about? Or right. oh, I'm actually feeling lonely. Oh no. Yeah. You know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling low self-worth. Uh -huh. I feel bad about myself kind of naming those things. And then saying are you just fucking this person or whatever because you want to feel better about yourself yeah or is it really like just sort of understanding a little bit more yourself about what right your what's driving you right to do something so i think a lot of people with porn can use porn or sex or to, sex yeah. to fill a void right and so when we mostly um are wired to use a to do a behavior to fill a void, we're actually missing the possibility of like expanding our pleasure in that activity, you know, and reaching real heights of transcendence, right? which is possible. So it's not necessarily uh, a bad thing that you want to fill a void with 
that endorphin spike or that that excitement of being intimate with someone or uh, casually or whatever it is, it's it's that that is accessible. Like it's like eating an ice cream. If you could just keep going to the fridge and getting a, a, mm-hmm. a drumsicle out, we can just now he can grab his gummy bears and open his computer and try and escape that void. Yeah. So sometimes you just want to have gummy bears yeah. and you want and watch porn. That's fine. Yeah. It's not like naming a thing. And also, I think we got to be careful about judging ourselves because we're all humans and we're all going to fuck up. Yeah. And no one's perfect. Yeah. And anyone who sells you otherwise is full of shit. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I write in the book about how like one of my like void filling things was just like to roll a spliff with tobacco and weed Uh but like i will never just smoke a cigarette because i label that behavior as bad and then what i do is i start like chain smoking so that you're you're, so that i essentially smoke i'm smoking but like i'm chain smoking spliffs right and then i do this behavior where like i throw it in the trash i fish it out of the trash it's it's like ridiculous i pour water on it eventually you could substitute that with like if i was eating pizza or if i was like you know yeah having sex with seven people a day, whatever it is. It's like, you know, it's just this thing I do when I'm stressed and I'm anxious, but I recognize it. Well, I was just going to say, so, so do some people not have the ability to recognize or they don't want to recognize? And what do you do? How long do you let yourself play that game before you say, okay, stop? Well, now that I really, you know, I'm really hyper aware of it. Um, yeah, I stop. And then every once in a while I notice myself doing it. And one time it's funny. I have a friend who lives nearby me who has the same like neuroses about it. Yeah. And she actually buried her tobacco in the yard. And I went to her house and made her dig it up in a moment. So like I have my moments too. Or I might've written this book, sex, health and consciousness, but like, yeah, I'm, so I still, will, you're, you're, I, yeah, I'm yeah, human. I'll yeah. still, I'll still do that. I think again, it's like the same thing, just like noticing more, tuning inside noticing more where these where your um instincts are coming from are they coming from like a really grounded empowered place um or are they coming from like a hurt lonely sad scared anxious bored place and so when you said the word how when how can men crack beneath the surface because they want to become more powerful i think we have to be careful about that word powerful yeah because what do you um i think that again like are you that's part of the old paradigm Mm -hmm. is power something that equals like money and success and outward thing is it inner power and strength is it happiness like what is that that you're seeking can a man be an alpha male and be vulnerable of course i think being vulnerable yeah makes you stronger yeah a hundred percent yeah yeah like all yeah when you think of uh the that alpha male at the top of the hill or at the top of the mountain he had to have been vulnerable to get there. Yeah, and I think our idea of what an al- alpha male is is um, probably really far away from what an evolved alpha male is. And okay. I think it's about really a balancing of you know masculinity, femininity. We all have the that within us. It doesn't matter. I'm a woman, but I have a, a lot of masculine energy because I was raised with you know all these alpha men. Yeah. And so I think it's about like understanding, you know, the yin yang symbol, right? You've seen it. It's like half black, half white. Yeah. That is a symbol of like balancing those energies within us. And you said you were studying martial arts. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yin yang, like you, there's certain energy you use in a fight, um, like aggressive or defensive. Yeah. It's, it's similar. Yeah. There's um, merit in both. Right. And it doesn't make you weak or less of a man to be in touch with your feminine side. Yeah. Well, it's very interesting that that you say that because uh, and I'm not just trying. Everyone knows I'm on this, you know, jujitsu. This is a martial art. okay? But what makes you powerful in this sport is being able at the drop of a hat to just take your 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 hand and tap it on your body. And, it, and admit loss, defeat, accept the defeat. And, and what's also beautiful about it is, and I love watching, I love watching, you know, whether men are rolling with other men or even men with women. Like there, there's, a, there's a Brazilian uh, mom in, in Van Nuys that she'll choke me out. I, I'll lose consciousness. But the moment that I tap, 
I feel so empowered because I've just learned a little something. Something has been ingrained in me like, don't put your arm in that spot. If you put your arm in that spot, that's a dangerous spot. So just accept that you did it and understand that. Tap and start over. It's like, to me, it's the ultimate humility and vulnerability sort of tied together. Because in the other traditional sports, you don't really have that. We talk about sportsmanship in sports, but like you're taught to to kill. Mm -hmm. Like football, hockey, score as many goals as you can, run the score up. Like it, it doesn't have, martial arts is much different because well, it's Eastern. It's right. You're, okay, it's all what? based on duality and duality. that yin yang. I talk in the book also about, I trained with this guy, Master Kim in LA, who was a world champion um, Taekwondo. Yeah. And yeah, I was, le- I was learning Taekwondo, but he was also teaching me some, some Tai Chi and different aspects of the philosophy. And I remember him telling me that when he argues with his wife, he uses yin energy because when she comes at him with that yang energy, yang is traditionally means like masculine or aggressive. Uh-huh. And we don't need to necessarily, we don't, I mean, we need to frame that too because masculine doesn't need to be aggressive. Yeah. Be, but when she comes at him, her. At with the red she, energy. Yeah. He learns to like soften, uh-huh. soften. Yes. And direct it this way. Yeah. Deflect, you know. Yeah. Um, because you can't when you have two people Diffuse. meeting meeting each other with that energy bring that energy <sighs> yeah you know yeah. and really what we want that's what i i really appreciate martial arts and because it brings in so much of that philosophy which i think is great for life what what is it about the eastern spice to it like why have they why did they invent that that yin and and, and the yang and american culture has never really embraced that well, because in America, we're all about capitalism and, right. you know, success and what can I get and what yeah. can I take? And I don't know where that's necessarily left us, but I think you can have both. I mean, I think that you can you can have success and you can be a leader and you can be, a you know, a killer on the field in your sport. Yeah. But that you can also have like work hard at having that kind of like balance. I yeah. mean, you know, a lot of. As I said, I spent a lot of time. I surf, and I spent a lot of time around surfers. And well, well, and and the ocean sort of represents that yin and the yang from a martial arts standpoint, right? Because you are, you are not in power. No, it's so humbling. Yeah, I actually love that because it constantly reminds me of my vulnerability. Right. And I love learn. Like I can be, you know, I'm a leader in some areas of my life, and then I get on a surfboard, and it's like, yeah, I- I'm the ocean's bitch right (laughs) and you never know what's going to happen right i like feeling i like those moments of real insecurity actually yeah and where like everyone i know who surfs is at a pro level is great yeah and i'm not yeah you know i'm not terrible right but it's it's kind of i like being humbled in that way and i think it's uncomfortable for some people but i actually think it's like a good exercise yeah because when we allow ourselves to just be like you know it complacent i think it's like having a childlike mindset about yeah. life yeah. being like there's always something more i can learn yeah there's always like i think it's good to let yourself you know fail or yeah. be defeated or it's those moments that like make our character insecurity and vulnerability are they two different things yes well you know what's really interesting is that i end up teaching like a lot of young boys in the water things like they ask me about vulnerability or like i'll (laughs) teach them about the menstrual cycle yeah or about all sorts of things about the prostate and i learned that with surfer with like these boys in their 20s all i have to do is relate every single thing to the ocean and they get it and they get it yeah yeah i'm like well the menstrual cycle the moon the tides you know like they they get it as long as i relate anything to the natural world the ocean they 100 percent understand it vulnerability and insecurity are two different things so insecurity is like um oh well, it's a bit of a fear right or so, or you could feel insecure about the way you look uh-huh. i think we're living in a town where most people feel insecure about way they way, the way they look so yeah. people do like a lot of stuff to their you know their face right. to change it um so it comes from generally like low self-esteem low self-worth yeah like i that just made me think of um Vulnerability could be me saying to you, like, um, it could either be telling you how I feel, either about myself, 
or about you or yeah. about a situation we're in yeah. that like, you know, reveals something because, but vulnerability is what makes you fall in love with people. Right. You don't fall in love with people because they're perfect. Right. Right. It's like, oh, they have that cute little chipped tooth and they kind of like stutter. And yeah. You know, little they're little idiosyncrasies yeah. of vulnerability. They're like a somebody. terrible cook, but they really try. Right. Or right. Whatever it is. How? how uh, so just about that, like. This is always something that I've always thought since I was a kid. And I think that women that um, specifically don't wear like a ton of makeup and and like the Kardashians created this whole thing with um, contouring, mm -hmm. right? Like, how would a guy ever say to somebody that they care about, you know, I think you're really beautiful without makeup or or I think without mo foundation I think, I think most people feel that way but i mean you and i come more from like the fashion background where it's like not cool yeah to wear yeah, that yeah. much makeup yeah, and be yeah. contoured yeah um but i think but that's a whole other discussion about what society's done to women to make them feel like they need to do that but to, how to present themselves and look good i i understand that but from a stepping back into the man's boots for a second how would you say that yeah, and I all I you I look the mo sexiest when we wake up. We in wake the morning. up in the morning. I just think you're so hot. Right. Yeah. That's as easy you as always want to say things without a. Ne you don't want to say negatives. Yes. Even and especially when you're talking about like what you do like or don't like sexually, you right. don't want to say I really hate it when you. Yeah. You always want to be like, you know what I love. Yeah. Is this because that's interesting because positive reinforcement because I had a little bit of guilt saying it the way that I self said it you know where it's like I really I really like versus I prefer you no you you know you look beautiful when you wake up in the morning and it makes me feel I really f I don't know there's a feeling like I just I love seeing you wake up in the morning how you look yeah it's really kind of as easy as that, but but I don't know if there's a lot of relationships that have that. I mean, I think we can only try. Right. Right. Yeah. You have you have a chapter on menstrual, on, on menstruation. <laughs> menstruation, masturbating, and manifesting. What? Tell me about this, <laughs> because I, manifesting I think is one of the most powerful words and and practices. So is masturbation. Okay. Tell, well, <laughs> you've put the, all three of them in a chapter, so just give me a quick little I really, overview. I like alliteration, Sean. I like the three M's together. Yeah, it, um, I, I like it. Which okay. one do you want me to break down first? Well, menstruation. You know what I wish? I wish that men could experience at least like seven months of a menstrual cycle. The world would be so different. Well, you know, I live with a lot of shame today in not being more connected um, – with my wife's pregnancy you know like now seeing him beside me and how he looks just like me and it's like it's like it's like sean without his clothes off but he's he's two you know what i mean like and it has triggered yeah like so when you say menstruation cycle i also think about like pregnancy and and how difficult of a job that is for women but but specifically to menstruation well that's why like i love teaching guy, like, younger guys about menstruation because as straight guys i'm really especially talking about straight guys because yeah. which um, we're allowed to state we're allowed to still say that that exists what? right that, that there are straight men i mean aren't you straight yeah I feel like this Everyone that I've Everyone's met today here is straight. Really yes. straight. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Because the thing is, if you're a straight men and you want to have sex with women, and we're also living in a world now in America, pro post Roe v. Wade, where yeah. things like access to, um, you know, reproductive. Yeah. Well, soon there will be more rules around access to contraceptives, IUDs, right? Fertility, all these things. Yeah. Not to mention like the morning after pill and abortion. Yeah. It's really important that you're aware of the menstrual cycle. Yeah. It's really important that you're aware oh, of like your your role in it. If I you see. don't want to get if you don't want to have a child. I it's see. Very important. 
if you're if you're just a straight man who loves women, you should know. I mean, I will, I'll tell. I made actually a bet. I think I wrote about it in the book. I made a bet with this kid who taught me how to surf. And before we went out, I was like, I'll bet you $1,000 that in the next five years, you're going to be mens- buying menstrual products for someone you love. No, 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 no way. So we got in the water and we're, we're surfing. And then in between the lineup, I start like telling him about, well, hey, you know, it pays to know when someone's on their cycle and they're having cramps because like you could offer them chocolate or like some menstrual cramp products and like that will win you big points. Right. Like if you're the guy at the party that like, ha- you know, is yeah. more aware of yeah. like of that's just going to make you more empathetic. Right. To women, not to mention help you out down the road. If you're like in a committed relationship, you don't want to use and you're you've both been tested and have talked about monogamy and you're not using birth, uh, you know, contraceptives right. to not get someone pregnant right? and understand because when they say things like just the tip, just the tip, just let me put it in the more that you, the more information and education you have around all these subjects, the better informed your decisions are. Yeah. And, and just selfishly from a standpoint of trying to make this sticky for some of the guys listening, no woman is going to, not be affected by your openness about that or understanding right because us as men we've sort of been the movies oh she's on her she's on the whatever she's on her period you Mm -hmm. know what i mean it's got this negative connotation where why not from a man's standpoint like that's a moment to connect with somebody that you love or that you're in a relationship with and say i understand like how can i help yeah, and our, a woman's not going to go, oh, you're s- wh- why are you saying that to me? They're going to feel good about that, right? Yeah, you're going to just feel more closeness. Yeah. And, you know, I think also it's really hard for, a, you know, a guy to understand what you go through emotionally, right. like in a month. And it's the way real. You're, yeah, the way your you know, mood cycles, your hormones, like the pain, it's, it's real. The fact that we can like perform brain, not me personally, but like perform brain surgery, run a marathon, do all these things while bleeding is pretty insane right when like i've seen a lot of like grown-ass men be like have a cold yeah and just be like unable to function yeah um or or be in bed for two days after hysterectomy yeah i mean yeah the shit we go through is real and also we're living in a world that is not you know built to support women so i think that part of that balancing too is just having more understanding and empathy on both sides for what we go through. Yeah. Like I, I think it's important to understand the menstrual cycle. And like I said, it's important for straight women in relationships to men with men to understand that men have feelings Yeah. and to be able to like help, you know, nurture the, the that process. Well, that's very interesting is that, um, you know, yeah, that, that would be like, I can sit here today and say, well, maybe I've never really been open to that um, as much as I should have been. But also, I I don't know if men give women the comfortability or the license to sort of help us with that, right? And yeah. Well, we don't want to like do your work for you. No, right? I get, I get it, but, I get it. But um, but I think that's why it's important and cool for guys, like you know, especially I think in sports when men can start to be more open about their process and their vulnerability and like where you're saying, this is where I'm at. Yeah. Like it's no, I should have, should have, would have, could have. Right. This is where you're at today. It's cool for you to share your story and be like, listen, I'm an imperfect human Yeah. and I fucked up and made mistakes and yeah, here's where I'm at. Cause it can only help other people not feel so alone. Right. Which is the whole point of me writing this book and me starting the sex ed is for people to not feel so alone because I first got into this game when I was like 13. I worked at Planned Parenthood in LA in Santa Monica as a paid intern and I organized the media library and I did AIDS peer education and I would answer questions. Yeah. And it was like astounding to me even as a kid how many people were walking around and and especially now with the sex that I get, you know, we get thousands of of messages all a day, a week. People all over the world being like, I'm worried that my penis isn't the right size. I'm worried my vulva is not the right size. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. All these people thinking that they're the only person on the planet having this feeling, having this insecurity. And I can look at the data and be like, well, we, I have like 4,500 other 
so that's questions so the that's, same thing. So that's real. Like people, people have like there are insecurities attached to that. We all have insecurities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's people who squirt and wish that like feel insecure about that. There's people who don't squirt. Porn has done a whole job too, of creating more insecurities, especially for men with performance anxiety. Actually, the rise in erectile dysfunction is directly related to streaming porn. Because they don't think that they can live up to the, what they watch. What they watch. The oh, same thing. Jesus. And people learn stuff in porn and they think that like that just happens. Well, actually, it's like, you know, it's like movies. You don't just like start driving a race car backwards at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. There's like a whole setup and discussion before that takes place. Yeah. You're not having like a choking scene or, you know, s s some, like a gangbang, any of those type of scenes in porn without conversation, boundaries, consent being right. discussed right. before the cameras roll. I mean, we I interview a lot of porn stars. I'm friends with a lot of porn stars. We include them on the sex ed and in this book. And I think that. I think that we should be allowing more porn stars to be involved in that sex ed process because unfortunately that's where people are learning sex ed. Right. Is porn. Yeah. Yeah, the whole the the mens the menstrual cycle like it seems like from an education standpoint man, I mean I've never heard this before where somebody could say to me like I can teach you about how this works. Like you're a 22-year-old guy, you want to be responsible, the world's changing like there's science to this. I can actually, we can show you and tell you like this is the safe time of the month or this is when it should be the safest. Yeah. We've always, we know that that's possible, but no one really, you can't really find that out. I mean, how? I mean, that's what I'm here that's to do. do. I just was with these like 12 year old boys, my one of my friend's kids and his buddies, and they were asking me all these questions. They're like, what are my balls called? They asked you what their balls yeah, were called? Uh -huh. And then I told, That's I blew awesome. their mind when I explained that we have two holes. That Because a lot of grown men don't understand that like pee and blood don't come out of the same hole. Right. But I was breaking it down that language because they're 12. Yeah. And they kept calling it like blood water. And I was like, well, actually, and they were like, Phew. They're like, wait, you have three holes and we only have two? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I'm yeah. Like, That's so cool. They had no idea. And I was like, no. yeah, it's actually called, I was like, it's a vulva. It's not, uh, the vagina is like, well, just one part of it. And then there, I explained to them the period. I was like, well, it's the walls of the uterine lining. They lost interest after a little bit. But yeah. Yeah. I got through them enough that they now know that their balls are called testicles. And they know what a vulva is. And they know that's a lot of information, more information for a 12 year old that like a lot of 25 year olds are not aware yeah. that there's two holes, that we have women have two holes. Well, yeah, but also it's even like um, I love that they called them balls, but like that they didn't know what else to call them. They like, had no one to ask. Yeah. Testicles. They're yeah. my testicles. Yeah. No. And <laughs> I think it's cool. I think you should start talking to kids age appropriate about sex and their bodies and like name thing name the real names for things i i agree yeah early you i know? agree because yeah. they get you get, we get a lot of misinformation and we don't know who to ask and they learn things so quickly yeah you know it's just about in in all the hawaiian islands still i hear this phrase being tossed around a lot that i haven't heard on the mainland since i was a kid that's so gay oh my god that's so gay that's so gay like it could be any kind of behavior like I, we now hear like don't really say that yeah no but i like I, I was hearing like 40 year old parents repeat that shit. that's so gay yeah that's so gay and that's how i would say to like the kids like you know where's that come what does that mean to you because you're then stopping them like literally two ki two little kids like wrestling and embracing and the parents would be like that's so gay i'm like Again, we're stopping boys from just having love and warmth with their friend. Right. There's nothing like sexualized about that. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's just interesting. Like we just have to start having conversations and there's a way to do it without being like you're canceled. Yeah. You know, because we got to like meet people where they're at right. and lift them along on the journey. Right. You know? Yeah. Otherwise, we're um, we're just we're, we're setting ourselves back in a time where information is so accessible you could go to an instagram page like the sex at sext at the sex ed at, at the some sex people ed. call call it sex because it's s-e-x-s-t -S -S 
T H E S E X E D, but yeah. yeah, it's the sex ed. At the sex ed. Yeah. You could just go on an Instagram page and and once a day, like you have a, a an Instagram page with great quotes. You could go on and and you guys put it together in a bite sized sort of bite of an apple. Like, oh, I just that's interesting. I didn't know that. You know. So to immediately say that to uh, to to boys, yeah, it, it's like we're not progressing this thing forward. That's what I also love about jujitsu. There's something so interesting about laying down with a complete stranger and putting your hands all over them, like moving your body across their body, and and you know you're trying to submit them or gain control, but. It's an awkward thing at, at first, you know, like there's a there's a science to it. Like you have to emit some pheromones to make sure that they understand that they're comfortable and safe. And like, mm. I'm not going to try and kill you here. And I don't know if you can kill me, but we'll feel this out. We'll do this dance together. Mm -hmm. Even dancing. Kids yeah. like do they still dance at junior highs? <gasps> We actually had these two, we, a couple of 12 year olds at the WSL awards and there was like a little dance thing afterward and they were just on the floor, like dancing getting down. It was really cute. Yeah. I love this journey you're on Sean, because you've always been so curious yeah. and like willing to put yourself out there. I mean, when I met you, you were, you know, playing hockey, but then you were interning for Vogue and yeah. no one was like doing that kind of stuff. No, but you know, I think it's not, this to me doesn't feel that different in terms of like your curiosity to like grow and explore yeah. and like be like, I'm not going to stay in this box that no. you're trying to put me in. Yeah. No, I don't want to be in it because I feel less, uh, I was going to use the word power and, and it's like, this is, but at least I, as soon as I heard it, I was like, Sean, don't say that. I feel like I have less tools in my belt to be, to be cool to be not cool, cool, but like to walk into a room and make sure that, you know, Nash's friends at his birthday party or whoever it is feel that like, I'm not a threat. I'm really open to however you want to express yourself or, or however you want to send me vibes or feelings like i'm not there's no judgment here like we're all on this journey well you're just trying to get comfortable because the more comfortable you are with yourself yeah the less you're going to worry about what someone else is doing over there right so that like oh that's so gay whatever kind of words comes mostly from a place of ma manhood being feeling feeling threatened yeah it's like you're looking at yourself like when other people's behavior and as long as they're not hurting you or other people is like so problematic to you, that's usually like you got to look at your reaction. You know, actually that's, a lot of like, um, yeah, one of my mentors was the head of sex and relationship therapy at UCLA. And I got I got introduced to him through one of my friends who's like was one of the biggest porn stars in the world. And she would lecture in his class and she was would tell these therapists who were all taking his class that how hard it was for people in the adult and kink space to find a good therapist because the therapist had all these judgments right. on what they were doing. Right. And it's like so interesting. And so my mentor used to always say that it's like the work is to look at yourself when someone else is expressing something they do that makes you uncomfortable, like a lifestyle choice yeah. to be like, why does that make me so uncomfortable? Right. That this person is just living their life. They're not hurting anyone. They're not hurting me, but like I'm judging, I'm judging it. Right. Is, is that the inner child that we're all sort of um, uh, just managing? Maybe, but it's also like just con behavior that we learned as a kid. Things right. that our parents taught us or religion taught us or school taught us right. about like what we're trying to conform to. And right. like, again, status quo. Yeah. Most people just want to go along with it. Right. Um, sex, health and consciousness. I want to sell some books <laughs> now. Sell some books. Do you think this would be a good exercise for couples to read this book together and sort of have like their own little book club? Totally. Where they, where they you can listen to it. I do the audio version. Did you do it yourself? I did it myself. How yeah. long did it take? A week. It's a hard task, right? It was really intense. Uh, and I host a podcast, but it was it was a whole other level. Yeah. I mean, I did mine like 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, but it is labor intensive. It's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. D did you enjoy it? I did. Yeah. I did. Like I trained for it. Um, yeah, I, it was really good. 
I would rather thing. people, if they did the exercise, though, I would rather them. Well, there's actually exercises in the book, too. There there's is. a lot of uh, there's the, uh, the there's chapters. exercises inside the chapters that like help yeah. you, you know, kind of internalize whatever you've been reading about. Yeah. Which is very smart because. um um uh, I don't know. I took a parenting class. Okay. And they do that. Like at the end of the chapter, they give you these, I don't want to call them tests, but they're exercises. And it just gives the stuff, the ability to be a little bit more sticky. Yeah. Like you can apply it right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to give people real practical, helpful information that they can take into their lives yeah yeah not in the abstract uh our sexuality is an integral part of who we are yet our understanding of sex has been warped by everything from age-old taboos and religious dogma to a popular culture that views sexuality as transactional with sex health and consciousness liz goldwin founder of thriving online pl platform and podcast the sex ed has created an inclusive holistic and much needed guide to the sexual well-being and the pleasure that's possible when we embrace our sexuality as a natural part of a healthy human experience. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's a pretty good <laughs> summary of what you're getting yourself into, right? Yeah. And this isn't dangerous and you shouldn't be afraid of it. No, I want you to have better sex. I want you to be happier. Yeah. Yeah, I want you to be more in touch with yourself. Fulfilled. Yeah. It makes us more powerful. <laughs> Well, it does. It does that. Yes, it does make us. I just more, said <laughs> you did, that's why I looked at you. I know you didn't realize. But it makes you power. It makes it. This will is a marker. Make you empowered. 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 Not powerful because you want to be more powerful empowered. for someone else, but empowered like you're radiating. You're glowing. I you're just got goosebumps. Did empowered. You, and, and like I'm not. Uh, yeah, for a moment there, I felt shame a little bit. Like, Sean, you said it again. Like, But what you the just fuck? have to stop with the shame I shit. I know, I know, I know. Empowered. Empowered. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful word. Because that's not just for for you. It's kind of for everything. Yeah, you can empower other people. Yeah. You being empowered can help set someone else be empowered. Yeah. Um. What's one of your uh, pet peeves right now about the world? <laughs> Where do we start? I mean, just give me one. Okay, I, you know what I think is really unsexy? Yeah. When people fucking litter on the beach Gross. drives me crazy. I feel like I pick up trash all the time. I used to, uh, I've had incidents where I've like... I picked up trash this morning on a hike with a friend. Yeah, think about the gluttonous, lazy, self-centered, like... But I, you know, again, I think of... And, and I'm in this weird spot where I I want to be empathetic towards everyone. But it's like, no, fucking you litter. That's a lazy, bullshit, selfish yeah, littering move. is so unsexy. It's the worst. Yeah. Um, and that's for men. Like, that's no, a little. No, just everybody. I don't like anyone who litters. Okay, what about for, what, what about for men? What would you, one thing, because I want to I want to empower these guys. I want them to feel good about themselves. What's a vulnerability or something? I don't really have, I don't think I have, I think. I would say I think we all need to work on our communication. Yeah. We all need to work on our communication. Like this communication? Not Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, not Yeah, just being like no. I ha you know what I get really annoyed with is when someone wants to um yeah, I like face to face time or FaceTime. Yeah. I'm not a big fan. I'm busy. We're all busy. Like I don't like yeah. the endless texting yeah. type of thing. Um I don't know if I have a pet peeve. I mean, I'm so old fashioned. Yeah. You know, you like, you, I you like, know, I like, uh, a man to hold the door and tell you that you look beautiful and, and flowers, flowers, flowers are great. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I'm not really into the, I've never used a dating app actually. I was just going to ask you. I didn't think yeah. so. I never did. I had I one, couldn't. one time I had a friend, a male actor who I won't name who he is cause he's, He's very successful. <laughs> and he and we were both we had both broken up with someone at the same time. We we're really good friends. And he joined some new dating app and he was like insisting that I did it. And I, was, I really don't want to do it. Oh, please let me just create a profile for you. So he put a picture of me on in a wig, actually. And I had like a fake name. He set it up. 
and then go to bed, wake up in the morning and I have all these messages and he's like really pissed because I have more messes than he does on his, his I thought he was trying to do profile. it to help you. He was doing because he just didn't want to do it on his own. Oh. He wanted me to like have to go through this journey with him. Right. And um, yeah, I just was not into it. But I love going through my friends. Yeah, I do too. The things and like and seeing doing what's them. going but on. But my guy friends get so mad because I always will send messages like, want to get a mani pedi? Yeah. <laughs> or like, yeah. let's go get an ice cream sundae. They're like, no one talks like that, Liz. I'm like, I would love it if someone said let's go get a root beer float or well i and I, it just made me immediately think like uh putting myself in in guys shoes modern day men right now or young men or teenagers like sup don't say sup to a woman you like i love also i have like a 22 year old like he's like my adopted little brother i'm super close with and he's changed so much since we started like I started talking about all yeah. this stuff. He told me the other day he had a conversation with this woman. He told me about, he's like, yeah. And I told her like, I knew she needed space. I was like, Oh my God, where did this come? So proud. Wow. Where did this come from? He was like using his words. He was saying, you know, it was really interesting yeah. just to see how like our conversations had opened him up Yeah. where he was like able to communicate better yeah. with and girls. And even I always say to them too, if you want to just have casual sex, that's fine. Be upfront yeah. with women about that. Yeah. Don't let them believe it's something else. It's yeah. so much better to just be like, hey, this is where I'm at. Yeah. I would just want to make sure we're go both good with that yeah. before this goes any further. Yeah. And a, and a man, um, I guess I want men to know or young men or teenagers what's up do teenagers listen to podcasts i think so <laughs> you know i guess not every like if 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 a if a a man walked up to you and he fumbled his words and he just wanted to tell you that he thought you were cute or pretty or i don't know do you live around here like as long as you do it and and I probably wouldn't answer, do you live around here? Okay, I, that, I get that. Because that could verge on, like, stalkery. But but hold on. Wouldn't you feel my – I said that because that was like a – I was being vulnerable for a second. Like, shit, what do I say, right? Because I don't – I mean, I don't know, it's been a long time since I've, I've said that to, to a stranger. But you would feel their vulnerability, right, and, and give them a soft landing? Yeah, I think it must be really hard – to approach someone yeah you know yeah i totally think it's difficult and so i understand that like technology like sliding into someone's dms is like an easier way yeah sometimes for people to do it but i still think that i tend to meet people yeah in real life yeah it's not empowering to do it online i, I mean, don't think so yeah i've met great friends online yeah do you, do you like how i use it? empower i do yeah. like it um <laughs> Sex, health, and consciousness. Uh, Liz, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, we could keep talking about it, but but it's it's just, I, I like it to be sticky, okay? Guys, I want you to do yourself a favor. Don't force yourself. Enjoy it. Buy the book. Buy the audio book. You're going to, this is going to empower you. This is what we did this for. We did this. And, and look what I've, I've just come out of this going, the word power, I don't want that word anymore. I want the word empower. I mean, that's what I got just out of having this conversation. I want you guys to read the book. I want you to understand it. And if you have any questions, they can send a DM. Yeah, to the sex ed at yeah. the sex ed or email info at the sex ed dot com. Our and website's the sex ed dot com where we have. You can find everything that we do. Yeah. All our pod and our podcasts are available wherever you stream. Okay. And our last few podcasts have been like guided meditations, which you experienced a version of one that I'm actually be doing next Tuesday at the Hammer Museum. I got the invite. Yeah. And I think uh, you're doing it on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's a much more extended version of it with the sound bath. And I'm doing like my little sort of TED talky. Where is before. that information if somebody that was in the area wanted to go to that? Or is that just to it, your friends and family? No, no, it's free. It's open to the public at the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles in Westwood, which yeah. is an amazing contemporary art museum. Yeah. And yeah. And that's next Tuesday, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Okay. Which is a love meditation because we all all need more love liz thank you thank you i know you're busy um 
Wow, you're doing God's work. You really are. Goddess's work. Goddess's work. <laughs> Episode 45. We'll see you next week. That <laughs>